Hope you're having an awesome Pi Day. My name is Robert. I'm a solutions architect with EM Memory Databases here at AWS. Welcome to create a high throughput real time data pipeline with Amazon Elastic Cache for Redis. We'll do a quick introduction into the need for speed, then we'll dive deeper a little bit into Amazon Elastic Cache for Redis. We'll talk about the latest features that we launched and do a real intro into real time data pipelines. At the end, we'll do a small demo. Data is everywhere, and it grows at an impressive speed. Real-time applications require high throughput, upwards to millions of requests per second. And at the same time, they also need extreme low latency, often in milliseconds. Your applications also need to be globally available. For this, you need to plan for scalability and use open APIs whenever it's possible. All applications can use more speed, many demand it. In a competitive world, we see customers demanding low latency at all times. We have seen that if your website is slow, up to 90% of the customers will leave. More than half of them will purchase from a different retailer, and over one quarter will never come back. A study from Akamai shows that even 100,000 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds will reduce your conversion rates by 7%. This is where Amazon Elastic Cache for Redis comes in. Developers want the right database to meet their unique applications demands. The one size fits all of relational databases to be used for everything no longer works. It brings performance issues, lack of scalability, and flexibility. That's why we have a wide array of databases here at AWS, from relational to purpose-built and Elastic Cache to cover and speed up all of them. Elastic Cache comes in as a fully managed service, delivering ultra-fast performance in sub-millisecond reads and writes. It helps to speed up your relational and NoSQL databases. It supports the two most common open source engines, Redis, and MNKD. Today, we'll talk about a lot more for Redis. It is fully managed and it gives you all the hardware and software that you expect. But the more important is the monitoring aspect of it because managing a Redis cluster is not an easy task and we do that for you. It is able to scale both vertically and horizontally up to 500 nodes in a single cluster. And it's deployed in an Amazon VPC. So you get all the network isolation, security groups, encryption in transit, as well as address, and with Redis 6 and above, access control list. Now, let's see some of the latest features. Enhanced IO multiplexing. We know that the Redis engine is mainly single-threaded. So that means that most of your commands will go and be processed there. What the Enhanced IO multiplexing does, it takes care and uses the rest of the cores in the CPU to enhance and increase your throughput up to 72% and reduce your latency up to 71%. It is available on Redis 7.0.5 and above. In the next graph, we'll see that the more clients you have, the better throughput you will expect from the same instance type compared to the previous version of Redis 6.2. Now, let's take a look at how that works. Essentially, the enhanced IO multiplexing threads that are running in this Redis node will take care of establishing the connections and handling those commands and pipeline them to be sent to the main Redis processing engine. That means we can batch those requests or commands, send them, be processed, and then send them back to the corresponding client. The second launch that we did is our increased SLA to four nines of availability. We have increased by 10 times our SLA when running Elastic Cache and MemoryDB in multiple availability zones. We say that latency is a new downtime, but real downtime is what we all want to avoid. We provide mission-critical service for our customers, increasing the scalability and resiliency. With four nines SLA, if you have an outage longer than four minutes and 21 seconds in a given month, you'll get 10% of service credits. Now, let's see how we can use Amazon Elastic Cache in a real-time data pipeline. 
let's say you have an application where the requests are coming from the web from the internet through an application load balancer. Then this will be handled by Amazon ECS, a set of containers running on Fargate. And then this data will be sent to Amazon Elasticash for Redis with a purpose built structure or data type called Redis Streams. This allows you to have hundreds of thousands of requests per second in a single node. Then a separate segment of containers will read from the stream using the xread group command and have two jobs. One, sending real-time metrics to a different Amazon Elastic Cache for Redis cluster that we'll use for analytics purposes. That means you can get the uh, real-time data and an analysis of, for example, the top items in a certain threshold. And then the second job is to put the data at rest safely in a data lake on Amazon S3. For later purposes, that means historical queries or more complex machine learning or AI that you cannot do with it. Now, we'll see a small demo about the two new releases and how we can have our data pipeline as well. All right, let's just dive in. I'm here in my AWS console in the Amazon Elasticash service, and I'm going to go directly into the Redis clusters. As you can see, I have four different clusters here, and they're all in cluster mode enabled. But that doesn't mean that they're well spread around in multiple ability zones. I actually have a single AC cluster right here that, in this case, we'll see that it has multi-AC disabled. So as part of that 4.9 SLA that I talked about, that means we have to have our cluster spread around into as many availability zones as possible. For this purpose, we'll have to enable the multi-AC as well as spread around our nodes. In this case, I have a single shard with two nodes and we can see that both of them are on US West 2C. So whenever you do create a cluster, we can come here, create a cluster, cluster mode enabled, by the Redis demo, and make sure that you have multi EC enabled here. In this case, we'll go with cluster mode enabled, select our node instance, MCC large have in this case two shards, one replica. And this is another important thing that we have to select a subnet group that has multiple availability zones or multiple subnets in different availability zones. In this case, I have the four available in this region. We'll select uh, that is automatic placement. That means we're not going to say this node goes onto this AC. We're going to let the control plane do it for us. Next, let's enable encryption at rest. And if you do require to do so, enable encryption in transit. I'm going to select my PyDay security group here. And we also have the ability to change our backup retention, add SNS for notifications, as well as enable logs. And remember to always stack your resources. So we go to the next step, and these are important items to review, right? So we have a subnet group that has multiple ACs. We have selected the ability to have multiple availability zones, and then we'll go and create our cluster. So that's demo one. The next is our ability to create or use the Enhance IO with multiplexing. For this, I have prepared a test that is going to start running a lot of requests coming in our way. So I'm going to run it with version 6.2.6 .6, as well as 7.0.0.7. .0 and it's the same test. In this case, we're using the built-in Redis benchmark command, sending 100 clients 
each one of them doing a million requests of 100 bytes. And at the beginning, we'll see that actually the Ready 6 and 7 won't make a lot of change or difference, but as the volume grows, we'll start seeing better response times as well as more throughput coming from the Ready 7 version running on the same instance type. As we can see, we are still very well under the one millisecond response times. Now, let's take a look at the metrics for these clusters. Going back to our uh, console, let's go to our Redis version 6 and start looking at some of the metrics. And let's analyze for the past hour get and set type commands that we've been doing. So as you can see with Redis 6, we're able to achieve uh, roughly 8 million um, upwards to 11 million operations per second, I'm sorry, per minute with this given instance that we have our M6G and Excel. And with Redis 7, we should see the same or better metrics. Going back one hour. And now we can see that we get upwards of 12.5 million requests per second. Well, that's a 25% increase. That equates to the previous numbers that we saw in the graphs. Now, finally, the data pipeline that I talked about, we can see that we have our cloud formation that created a real-time data pipeline, and this has multiple resources. The first one being an ECS cluster that is going to act as our uh, aggregation. So we have a likes um, um, API. Essentially, we're going to capture a bunch of likes, and then we're going to process them with an ETL to put them at rest, as well as creating real-time analytics. If we go to our load balancer, we see that we have this as the entrance of all the requests coming in, and we can see some of the monitoring. We were creating uh, upwards of 5,000 requests per minute um, and this is just a simple test of how you can create a real-time data pipeline, knowing that Elasticash for Redis will be able to support upwards of half a million requests per second with a single instance. Well, thank you so much for having me.